Welcome to Betting Bananas with your hosts, the ruthless L. Wagman, Ryan the Corner Man Quinn, and Dave Van Auken. What's up, guys? Another Betting Bananas. This time again, no L. Wagman. She's kind of she's a little bit uh, busy this weekend. She's marrying a uh, winner of a couple weeks ago, our guy Grant Dawson. They're out there about to get married in a couple of days, so they're a little bit busy. But uh, my guy, so uh, top to my left, your right, whatever. Uh, Paul, the MMA shark, is back. Paul, how you doing, brother? She makes me look great in that entry video photo. So I, uh, <laughs> you know, it takes about 140 off me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, underneath us, but never underneath anyone. The undefeated, the quarterman underscore MMA doing his thing. AFL this past weekend, all over the place. Uh, you had a nice little interview with uh, Olenek. Love it, man. Ryan, how you doing, brother? I'm doing great. She makes me look good too. Actually, makes me look tall for once in my life. So I can't go against that. But yeah, I uh, know the oh, the Olenek interview is really good. We got his reaction to when he found out about Elir Latifi with the staph infection. We're posting that tomorrow. Uh, looking forward to that. But I'm happy to be here. I tell you all the time, every week. This is my favorite part of the week. This is like the weekend is almost there. Like that's that's my favorite part of the and, week. And we get to talk David off ledges every single week. So it's been wonderful. You guys have been helping me though. Daniel Rodriguez and Neil Magny, you guys so you guys saved me money on that one. Last mm-hmm. week, I, I did pretty good. Actually, I'm not going to lie. You ready for this one? I'll, I'll start there real quick. UFC 281 was personally the biggest MMA event that I made the most money on betting. Uh, 98% of it, I do have to uh, handshake my guy to my left, Paul MMA Shark. Just I rode the system. I had a lot of TKO bets early. The I, the prelims were done. I was just it was just icing on the cake on the regular fight, and not to give anything away, I think you and I we disagreed on one fight. I did win that one fight. Uh, I'm just gonna ride that guy to the end. He's 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 my guy. But unbelievable! I made the most money ever. Paul MMA Shark, Mike Trezano by TKO plus a thousand. Boom! First fight of the night. I had you. You said, "Hey guys, it's going under two and a half. It's a TKO." Yep. Boom! Just winning the money. Cash and tickets I, left to great. I had some I people guess. subscribe after that card and said they lost money. <laughs> Man, it was. They're the reason people. They're the reason there's instructions on pop tarts if you lost money on UFC 281. Yeah, it was. It was a great night. Ryan, what were you gonna say about it, brother? I got greedy and I made every one of my picks a parlay. Oh, and I um, and I lost my underdog pick. Other than that, I was and it was the first fight of the night too. So yeah. all my friends are just texting me like really angry emojis the rest of the event. And it yeah. was uh, it sucked. <laughs> but uh, you live, but we're rolling, right. guys. UFC Vegas sixty five. We have a heavyweight main event. We have a heavyweight featured fight. Couple female fights. Couple real skinny lines to a lot of close lines. Uh, fights two through seven. So let's get into it. We this is how we do it. Ryan best. Bet on the board, my man. UFC Vegas 65. Take it away. Miles John over Vince Morales by decision. I just, uh, you know me, as soon as I saw Glory MMA to his name, he's training there now. I thought his last fight, he lost a tough one. Overall, I feel like his com- his level of competition is slightly more. I just like what I've seen on him lately. Um, I, I don't, I, I can't see him finishing him, although a lot of people say they can see a knockout here. I just see that physical chess match being played here and him coming out on top. I agree with the, you know, like I said, Paul. Never don't give anything away if you don't want to. No, I'm, I'll I'm give really high on Miles John this weekend. Very high. It's one of my better picks on the board. I like it a lot. Good. I, I like. I don't it. mind. I don't mind tossing some stuff out here by any means because the system isn't developed until the fight card, really, as you see. Right. So, right. Uh, yeah. Is like, that just off the top? You do you like that play? You think Miles yeah, John? I don't. I, I don't hate it. Uh, Vince Morales isn't a bad fighter, but he hasn't fought the competition of Miles John. Right. Miles John got the wrestling, the defensive and offensive wrestling. He's got the good striking, uh, clinch control. I, I think that's probably a pretty good play. So. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Underdog play. We're rolling, uh, Ryan. What is your underdog for UFC Vegas 65 this Saturday night? All right. I have – hold on. Let me pull this up here. I want to make sure my talking points are right. Oh, yeah. And the name, Teresa – why do I forget her name all the time? Teresa. Oh, yeah. Teresa Blader. Blader. Now, um, now I, I, I go, I, I go to the jujitsu here, or the lack of, for that matter. Um, I, I don't rely on the age. I know a lot of people do. I'm like, maybe it's because I'm 35 and I still think I can do it. But, but uh, I don't, I don't care about that. She's a little bit bigger. Her last two fights were tough, um, and I see that Natalie. She has a lot of like armbar finishes, 
I don't see Teresa. She doesn't get finished here a lot. I, I don't. I don't see her getting armbar. I see those elbows in a lot on the ground. I was looking at a few of her fights, so I just see her grinding out. You know, to that big, big decision. To that big. I think it was Nick um, plus one hundred and fifty. I don't know. What do you got for me? I I, I got plus one hundred and thirty right now at pack twenty two dot com. That's where I bet. That's where I make my plays at pack twenty two dot com. Um. There we go, people. Sh- what's up, guys? Shout out, Paul is the man. Shout what's out, up, Ryan. What's um, up, Ryan? So yeah, plus one thirty. Uh, that's where I had it there. Um, so yeah, you're in that range. What uh, scares me on that fight? Yeah, I, I think that's a solid underdog lean. But if you look back at the Natalia Silva fight when she took on Jasmine, she really had awesome jujitsu and heavy top pressure in that. And if she does that against Blada, it, it could be a snoozer that she can win. Uh, but Blade has got really good striking, good defense. So I, I don't hate that play at all. I, I think I, that's a live dog. I, just, I feel the size is just going to be hard to, to get in there and really move. And like, then I see the way I saw a couple of like clinch games that Blade was doing. Like, she could really hand fight and pummel to get away from things. Yeah, I just, that's my underdog pick. Talking about size and underdogs, and you guys can call me crazy if you want. Give me Chase Sherman all day long at plus 175 money. He's fighting someone who just fought a couple weeks ago as a big heavyweight. First time in the UFC, went 15 minutes. Like, where is he at mentally? Cardio low. Uh, even, dude, he got kicked to shreds in that fight. I do not like the, the that quick of a turnaround for a heavyweight, especially a younger one. Like, if, if Olofsky did it, like, you would know he, he his body and all that stuff and whatever, whatever. Give me Chase Sherman plus 175 right now. Mark that on the board. So I put a play out on Monday to my subscribers um, in my chat. I didn't text it out yet, so you did not know that this was my main play of the week. It's Chase Sherman. There um, you go. Now I feel real good about it. I'm not it. saying it's going to be my biggest play of the week. It's the only play I have released to my VIP chat so far this week, and it was at plus 150 at the time. It swelled up. People are seeing Waldo as 8-0 and, and, you know, this prolific killer. Listen, he didn't check a fucking leg kick in the fight. Right. Not one. The fight was two weeks ago. There's no way he wasn't limping for a week and a half after that. Right. Zero training into this. Chase Sherman absorbs the most strikes in heavyweight history over the last seven years. He absorbs 11 significant strikes per minute, but doesn't get knocked out a lot. So, Against Jared Vanderina, he was hurt a little bit, but he came back and exploded. I think Chase Sherman wins a very boring decision. Watch this, guys. I, I'm trying to nail the day. I was there live. Uh, Chase Sherman, uh, both times. So Island fights 52, destroys Jeremy May's leg, leg kicks. And then, where is it? It's Gulf Shores, Alabama. Uh, man, he fought a, an absolute killer. Busted the guy's leg. Where is this on topology? Um. No, it was after that. Man. Rashawn Jackson. There you go. Rashawn Jackson, who is a fusion guy. Uh, telling you three years ago, it was this big heavyweight fight. Dude, Chase Sherman hit a baseball bat on his leg. I think Chase Sherman throws three leg kicks in round one. The fight could be totally different. I, Dude, it's just the veteranship, the age. He's been there before. He's gritty. He's a vet. Uh, and then, you know, let's just be honest. He 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 likes the uh he likes the show money, but he likes the winning money even more. Give me Chase Sherman. I like him as a dog yeah. a lot. So in April, when uh Waldo got his signature win over Thomas Peterson in LFA, who's an absolute killer, he was getting pummeled in that fight, and he hit him with a huge right overhook and knocked him out. Goes on to contender series, uh fought Danilio Suzard, I believe it was. And okay. Danil- yeah, it was in zero shape whatsoever. Takes a fight versus Vanderina. Didn't check one single leg kick. It was two weeks ago. There's been no training. I released it as a three unit. I might go as high as five on it. I mean, I couldn't love the play more. So, cool. Uh, good on you for picking up on that. But the the check leg kicks. It's yeah. It's there. I I love when you see the exact way to win. When if I see it as a common, I think of course their camp and the fighter sees it. So I think that's where they're gonna go. All right, three, five parlays, Ryan. You've been nailing these ones. Uh, I think two out of the last three weeks, I believe you've been so close on another one. Three, five parlay. A lot of action. We haven't even mentioned the main event. We'll get there. Spivak versus Derek Lewis, maybe. Mm-hmm. But three, five parlay. Take it away, brother. All right. Well, I already mentioned one with Miles Johns. I'm going okay. that. I'm, I'm keeping that in my three, five parlay. And a couple of, we just spoke previously before we went on, but a fight got nixed that I had in my picks. But 
Um, and then um, I have Maria Oliveri over Vanessa Demopoulos. 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 Yeah. All right. Now, I, I have Maria winning by decision. I don't think her ground is as good as Vanessa's, but I feel her overall MMA is just better. She's yeah. a little bit bigger, similar to what we're seeing. So I, I feel that's going to be another chess match there. It's going to be a little feeling out process in the beginning. Then her slowly, the snowball effect coming down to winning a decision. And then uh, this one here, I was I was analyzing this last fight like way too long. Then I realized, well, that's because it's not going to be, it's going to be too close. You know, so I have Jennifer Maya and Marina Moroz going the distance. Um, I know that Mar- Marina uh, Moroz just knocked out um, Agapova her last fight. Not that that's not impressive. I just don't put a lot of weight to that because we've seen uh, Marina Agapova just fade so many times. I think that she's got great striking. You know, she's got the height and reach over Jennifer. Jennifer's, but this is where I can't bet against Jennifer outright. Look at these losses. Um, Fierro, Shukigan, Shevchenko. Like, she's just, who's who? And like, who doesn't lose to those people? <laughs> you know, like, so it's, it's, she's a real, she's like a boogeyman. You know, she's the boogie woman. man. So I just, I, I have a hard time. That's a coin flip, but it's definitely going the distance. So that's my three. I like it. I like it. I like it. It's funny, Paul. That was, I'm happy you mentioned that. We'll be, we'll get into that before the main event. One of my main leads, and I don't know, I talked to her a couple times and, you know, I know she was a lot of American top team. So I, I kind of filed a Morose's career. I remember four or five years ago, I heard about the Iron Lady, Ryan. Even when you were there wrestling, I heard this is a huge prospect. And that's when, like, the the prime Ioana days and a, the ATT was different. Jillian was there at that time. And I remember hearing, like, this is a, you know, a prime, prime prospect. She had a little up and down at the early years, but it feels like the, over the last month, uh, year, 16 months, she's really kind of turned it up. I think that light bulb clicked. And to me, Maya's 34 years old, and I don't know if they're kind of like at different sorts of their career, if Moroz is really ascendant and Maya's down. And I think, yeah, she's a dog. Like, Moroz is, I think, uh, plus 190, 175 the last time I saw it. I like her as a dog, too. I really do. She's kind of my yeah. second favorite underdog. I really like the over there. The over two and a half makes a lot of sense. I, I, I don't know the juice on that right now, but I like that. Um, but I like Moroz. Um, Paul, are you, you have a lean or you have a feel or does – uh, strength of schedule goes to Maya. Sure. Yep. Yep. Because of course she's only lost to the best. Lean would probably go over one, over two and a half. Yeah, uh, I, it's it's pretty close to even money right now. Oh, that's good. That's oh, Just, Brian, I love that. Uh, right now it's minus one fifty five for over two and a half. So very safe play. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um. Okay. I remember, I remember when she first came to ATT, and like it's real tough with those um, those maybe prospects because they want to see what you got, and when by doing that, you kind of get thrown to the wolves. So she was training with the Joannas, even Amanda, and all those names that you just mentioned, Jillian, and like you just mentioned a who's who, and she's she stuck around, and now she's finding her own. So yeah, she she's tough, man. Yeah, Marianne Rose like- is like an, another Caitlin Chikagian in my mind, so. Mm-hmm. It's all gonna, you know, same style. Come at you, throw in and punches and bunches back up, and you know that's where Mike probably shoot and find an entry. So should be a really good fight. I think it's a sleeper fight. It is, and I just looked her up on Topology. I really didn't know this. So 2017, five years ago, almost six. We're almost in 2023. She lost to Carlos Braza, who beat you know before last week. She was the champ. Let's give you know give credit where credit's due. She lost to Angela Hill, who. Angie Hill beats a lot of younger girls at time. that time. Huh? Angel Hill, Angel Hill can win any fight at any time. Yeah, exactly. And to me, that Moreau, she was 25 at that time, and Angie was in her prime. So I think that's – like, if they fight now, I like Moreau's in that spot. But this is five years ago. And then she's on a three-fight win streak. She's very – she's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine canceled fights. Like, a lot of, like, ups and downs. I don't know why. I think now she's, like, she's on it. I think she's – yeah, she's 31 years old right now. I think she's in the prime of her career. <clears throat> I think she wins. I really do. I think she pulls it out. I like decision, you know, maybe even um, two rounds, not uh, unanimous, but like, um, I think Morose is going to get the job done. So that's that. Um, main event. Let's get into it, guys. Derek Lewis. I got to give one quick shout out. I got to give, I got one of my guys. Shout get, out. Getting his first UFC win on this card. Oh, uh, yes. Charles. Char- Charles Energy Johnson. Go get it done. Um, yeah. you know, 
a lot of people are saying he's going to lose by getting wrestled and out wrestled. And I'm telling you, listen, Charles Johnson is not losing this fight. That is my free play for anyone watching this. It's going to be probably a very large system play and prop. He's my boy. I've been with him seven years. Uh, Charles Johnson, remember the name. He's much I better. I just won 62. Like, uh, not a lot of juice, even if you just want to bet it straight up. 160 is not bad. It's, um, it's coming down, too, which is great. A lot of money's coming in on Zagaloff uh, because he's good, you know. He, yeah. He's got good wrestling, but he doesn't have the Makayev wrestling. And Charles really gave Makayev a run for the money in the third round. He it was is. a short notice yeah. UFC debut. Charles Johnson's going to be a problem in the 125 division. He's not losing that fight. Love it. Derek Lewis is coming in at a plus 155 underdog, guys. Uh, same thing. To me, this is a little bit, you ready? This is a little bit, reminds me of the, what we were just talking about, Jennifer Maya and Moroz, right? I think Derek Lewis, if you just look at his lineup and who he's lost to, he's fought the, the champs, he's fought DC and Madison Square Garden, he's fought every heavyweight in the division. Uh, Spickoff is kind of on the rise. I think he's won five out of his last six, all that looking good. I think his toughest competition was Tom Aspinall, took the L. I think uh, it's one of these things that anytime Derek loses a dog, um, you know, gets anyone in the in the world, he's got a chance because he's got that one punch knockout. I think I'm leaning Derek Lewis just as a play. It's a very, you know, I, I don't have a great feel on the fight, but just give me the dog at plus 150. I think I will take Derek Lewis. That's my two cents on that. Ryan? I like Derek Lewis. Uh, I, I just I have a hard time seeing Derek lose three in a row. And uh, I just I feel that right hand is still there. You know, so yeah. many different angles to come with. And uh, I, I just I really like I, I feel like Derek's going to do this. I feel that, you know, he's he's not the kind of fighter that, you know, you could throw hands in his face and he just lets you score on him. You know, he's going to throw. He's going to fight. And yeah. if, if that happens here. He's got power behind his punches. So I like him too. I like Derek Lewis in this fight. Very cool. Paul? I'll give some analysis on it. I'm not particularly giving a lean. Okay. Uh, listen, Derek Lewis is a fan favorite fighter. Everyone loves Derek Lewis. Molly McCann was a fan favorite fighter. Everybody I know bet Molly McCann, even though I wow. didn't put a play out on the fight. Um, <laughs> Derek Lewis, at the end of the day, has lost three out of four, all by knockout, to uh, much higher potential uh, caliber opponents. 37 years old, has had back problems. What would it take for him to get back into the title picture? He's going to have to win four or five in a row. Um, is he motivated? Is he in the gym training as much as he should be right now? We don't know. So there's a lot of what, which Derek Lewis will show up. The one that will quit easily if he's hurt, because we've seen it happen versus two of Asa. He practically gave up in that fight. Uh, last fight versus Sergey, he was still in it. I think it was an early stoppage, but... You're seeing that chin growing with him, aging with him. Yeah. He's yeah. the better fighter. He's the more dangerous uh, fighter. Uh, Sergey couldn't put out Alexei Olenek. So that's got to linger in the back of my head. Not ready to make a prediction on that fight. But, you know, which Derek Lewis shows up? The Derek Lewis that flattened uh, Dawkins last December or the one that we've seen this year? So makes wow. for a fun main event. It is. It is. I. I don't think it goes the distance, and that's just I mean, that's a lean I have too. I think it's going to be quick. I would, you know, if it's if two and a half or one and a half is the under, I think I go under. I do think it's a, a, a one round fight because I do agree. I think Derek Lewis, you know, he don't want to be in there for twenty five minutes. I think he's he kind of plays a little bit on the dangerous end. He kind of goes for it, and sometimes, of course, when you do, you leave yourself way open. Um, I kind of do see it ending within five minutes. To be br brutally honest, that's kind of my take on it. It's minus 700 to not go the distance right now. <laughs> sure. So that, that's me being bold, guys. What a bold take I just had. Capper of the year. <laughs> Under one and a half is minus 120. Wow. There we go. There we go. Give there we me go. the over. Ooh. Yeah, I would go over on that. I would go over. Just I can see the heavyweights throwing away around one. Derek Lewis as a dog, Chase Sherman as a dog, Marina Moroz as a dog. I might be barking all night long, guys. I like a lot of dogs yeah. right now. Either of you guys yeah. are picking Jack Del Mel Jack Medellina to get knocked out by. No, 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 no. He and he just he, minus five huh? fifty. What we can't do anything right now with it. Can't yes, do anything. <laughs> He's minus one eighty to win by knockout. That's crazy. <laughs> 
Yeah, I got, I got, to, I got to get my text from uh, the MMA Shark so I know how to make money on that bet, guys. If you're not doing it, go do it right now. Go subscribe. Go to the MMAShark.com. You know, Ryan uh, hasn't we... used his code yet. I keep looking to see. What's, What's up? up, Corner Man? You haven't used your code yet that I sent you. Corner Man, Ryan. I, remember, I, I, I text you. Remember, I couldn't get in. No, David fixed it. You're all set. Yeah, you know, you're... your Christmas gift. It's right. unopened. You got to okay. get in, brother. It's it's okay. just. Paul's Paul's like Santa Claus. He's giving just money out to the people, to the masses. Okay, all right. All right. It's, I'll, I'll go in. I'll, I'll get it done tonight. <laughs> awesome, guys. Man, have a great night. Uh, next week is Thanksgiving, uh, so it might be a little bit of... But, but, but we've got, in my humble opinion, the fifth largest MMA card of the year next weekend. Black Friday, PFL finale. I was going to say, PFL is Friday. Yeah. That card is stacked. Yeah. Top to bottom. It is. We uh we had a ton of interviews. We've done a couple yesterday. Um, you know, so we have a lot of content with PFL coming up. Uh we'll be talking with Kayla Harrison, I believe, uh Tuesday or Wednesday. So uh Kayla will Fantastic. be here on Fight Bananas. We'll be chatting up with her. So uh it's gonna be crazy. Good car. That's Friday, uh, Mass. Uh, the MMA Sharks on Pachenko. Get her fired up. <laughs> I love it. I will. I love it. Guys, Paul, uh, the MMA shark, go subscribe there. Guys, go to YouTube right now, the cornerman underscore MMA. Ryan, man, uh, good luck. Have a great weekend. Guys, great we weekend. are out. Go watch Invicta. Got to go watch Invicta. Go watch it. Later, bro.